I am joined by Harvey Bischoff, president of the Ontario Secondary School Teachers Federation. He is in Brantford, Ontario. And, and I know, Harvey, you've been calling for, uh, you know, more strict uh, safety measures in schools for months now. Uh, the government, Ontario, now announcing almost $400 million in to do that, ventilation included, PPE. Um, and I guess, what, is that what you've been asking for? Is it enough? It, it, it's absolutely not enough. Um, I mean, these are the things we've been asking for since the summer. Um, included in that $400 million, by the way, which the minister claimed was about, about health and safety, was uh, enhanced summer programming, was money for hardware like laptops and so forth. Those aren't health and safety measures, um, and they, they continue to fall short of what uh, really needs to be done. So in your opinion, ventilation, you talked a lot about, and I think that that was going to be $50 million was going to go into that, um, and uh, as well as the PPE. And you're saying it's not enough. So what more needs to be done to make our schools safe? Well, I mean, let's go back to the summer and the sick kids advice that came out then. You know, when it comes to ventilation, what is the standard they're using to measure whether or not the ventilation is adequate? There is no standard. And so, you know, some number of dollars for... Uh, enhancement doesn't tell us if it reaches uh, reaches the mark. What are they doing in terms of re reducing cohort size, the number of students who come in contact with one another? Um, there doesn't seem to be anything in that. Um, you know, something that sick kids pointed to as, as absolutely critical. What are their standards for transportation? How many students can be crammed onto a bus? And apparently it's to the maximum that the bus will hold. Uh, so there's a variety of things. But, you know, I was especially disturbed today to hear again the question, what are your metrics for reopening? And both the minister and the chief medical officer completely failing to articulate a single metric um, that demonstrates that it's safe. Yeah, we didn't hear the details on that other than to say they're relying on medical and scientific advice, but also the advice of the individual medical officers of health in the province. And to that end, one of the new announcements today was that asymptomatic testing was going to be required on behalf of all of ours. And it's been in a little over 60 schools already, a kind of a pilot project, but now this is going to go in place to all schools. What did you make, about, make of that? Well, you know, the minister wants to have it both ways. He wants to take credit for asymptomatic testing, but completely abdicate any responsibility for an actual program uh, of uh, asymptomatic testing. So um, it's being devolved to uh, the local uh, public health units to make determinations on where and when asymptomatic testing is used. Um, the ministry is taking no control over that whatsoever, issuing no standards. So we don't know how it's going to be used. Um, we know there are good models out there. We know of one European model, for example, where if there's an introduction uh, into a class of, of COVID-19, all the students are sent home and six or seven days later, they are tested whether or not they're symptomatic. That would give us a real idea of what the spread is in classes, um, but we don't have any idea um, what the program is going to be in Ontario. Another thing that I found interesting and I wanted to get your thoughts on it is that they're saying that now um, students in university that are in education programs or, uh, you know, in teaching programs will now be given or allowed to have a temporary certificate so these students can now come in um, to address staffing shortages or help out. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, I mean, it's deeply concerning that this was another move made by this Ministry of Education uh, wherein they consulted us, not at all. Um, they talked to the College of Teachers, they talked to the deans of faculties of education. Apparently, nobody took our input on, um, you know, if you're going to pursue this, how to make that program effective. It's entirely still unclear to us that there are these shortages that uh, they're talking about. We've seen them uh, here and there, particularly in smaller and uh, uh, rural settings and so forth. Um, it's unclear to us there are shortages elsewhere. So, uh, you know, the real purpose behind this program is, frankly, a bit of a mystery. Before I let you go, was there anything in that news conference today in terms of the return to school plan that you liked? Uh, look, we've been calling for the summer since the summer for um, the youngest uh, children to be masked, and it seems they finally uh, they finally caught up with that and and uh, are having masking from uh, grades uh, uh, one to three. We think it should be in kindergarten as well, but you know they've made one small uh, step in the right direction, but have ignored so much of the advice that the that the uh, medical experts have given them. Um, especially at a time when um, the community rates are still quite high. 
Okay. Harvey Bishop, I do appreciate you coming on to talk about this. Thank you kindly for your time. Thanks for having me.